What has been your most bone chilling, hair raising, let's get the hell out of here experience? First reply I'm a criminal defense investigator. I had a murder case involving two brothers. The one accused of the murders was very autistic, and his brother was schizophrenic. The schizophrenic brother lived in a potato shack in the middle of the desert. I needed to talk to him several times throughout the course of the investigation, and since he didn't have a phone or electricity, I had to drive several hours out to his house and yell his name from the fence line until he came out of the shack. This investigation lasted for several years, and over time I developed a rapport with schizophrenic brother, and I kind of got to like him. He would talk your ear off about the aliens with golden eyes and the underground tunnels that connect all the Walmarts in the country, but he was pretty entertaining, and part of me wonders how much of it was a show. Schizophrenic brother eventually gets a girlfriend. She's a tweaker who has mistaken his schizophrenia for meth-induced psychosis. I talked to her a few times in jail when she was sober, and she was surprisingly charming and insightful. The last time I go to see schizophrenic brother, it's a dark winter night and tweaker girlfriend is there. She's lurking in the shadows and staring daggers at me the entire time I'm talking to him. I cut off his conversation about the speakers in his fillings and walk back to my truck to leave. A minute later, schizophrenic brother comes running out and tells me that he wants to show me something in his shack. He's never invited me inside before, and I'm not thrilled by the prospect. The whole thing feels off to me, so I tell him I have to get going and start the truck. The look of relief on his face when I declined to go inside convinced me that Tweaker's girlfriend was waiting behind the door with a hammer or something. A few months later I learned that she shot him in his sleep. The second story. I'm a criminal defense investigator. I had a murder case involving two brothers. The one accused of the murders was very autistic, and his brother was a schizophrenic. The schizophrenic brother lived in a potato shack in the middle of the desert. I needed to talk to him several times throughout the course of the investigation, and since he didn't have a phone or electricity, I had to drive several hours out to his house and yell his name from the fence line until he came out of the shack. This investigation lasted for several years, and over time I developed a rapport with schizophrenic brother, and I kind of got to like him. He would talk your ear off about the aliens with golden eyes and the underground tunnels that connect all the Walmarts in the country, but he was pretty entertaining, and part of me wonders how much of it was a show. The schizophrenic brother eventually gets a girlfriend. She's a tweaker who has mistaken his schizophrenia for meth-induced psychosis. I talked to her a few times in jail when she was sober, and she was surprisingly charming and insightful. The last time I go to see schizophrenic brother, it's a dark winter night and tweaker girlfriend is there. She's lurking in the shadows and staring daggers at me the entire time I'm talking to him. I cut off his conversation about the speakers in his fillings and walk back to my truck to leave. A minute later. Schizophrenic brother comes running out and tells me that he wants to show me something in his shack. He's never invited me inside before, and I'm not thrilled by the prospect. The whole thing feels off to me, so I tell him I have to get going, and start the truck. The look of relief on his face when I declined to go inside convinced me that tweaker girlfriend was waiting behind the door with a hammer or something. A few months later I learned that she shot him in his sleep and stashed his body in an old refrigerator. She has since plead guilty to his murder. The third story. A little bit different than the rest of the stories, but it gave me chills. My mom's best friend owns a farm about a half hour from where I grew up, we went there nearly every weekend to help with upkeep and caring for our horses. All day you could just feel a storm brewing. The wind, and humidity, outside had a greenish tint, and the clouds rolling in as the sun was setting. Right after supper it started raining, hard. A lot of wind and lighting too. I was looking out the window, across the yard and thought I saw something above the barn on the far side of the yard. I was petrified, it looked like rotation in the clouds. Dot and it started lowering down. I pointed it out to my dad. He said it was rain bouncing off the roof of the barn. We both looked out for a moment and clearly saw it suck back up into the clouds. I got goosebumps. We looked at each other for a second in disbelief. Then he shrugged, and went back into the living room. 
I sheltered in the bathroom. The next day, we saw in the news that an F4 tornado ripped through a small town, Spencer, SD, about 24 miles from where we were. I got chills when I saw the news reports. The fourth story. As a child camping, getting out of my tent to pee and coming back and just barely being able to make out eyes and something moving in the tent, I bolted to another tent and woke the others up. Turns out it was a raccoon and I had left a box of crackers in my tent I'd forgotten about. But at the time it was pretty terrifying. Fifth story. I must have been around 10 or 12 when this happened. I was walking back home one afternoon, around 3 or 4 p.m., after strolling around the neighborhood, which was usually very safe, friendly, and quiet. I was on the opposite side of the block, the houses behind ours, which wasn't an issue because there happened to be a park that went across the whole block and connected to the other side, so you didn't have to go around the whole block, so I was only a few houses away. I went through the park, a park I had played at my entire childhood, without paying much attention, when about halfway through, this guy who I didn't know, definitely older than me, wearing a hoodie started calling me. Dude, come over here one sec. Um, what do you want? Come here, I just want to ask you something, okay, ask me from over there. No, no, come over, please. No, tell me from over there. At that point, another dude that was sitting next to him gets upset, I hear it, that's it, and they both stood up quickly and started making their way me. I can't recall how far they chased after me, but my instincts just told me to run like hell and I did. To this day I still don't know if they were gonna mug me, if they were just taking the piss or what was happening but it definitely scared kid me. Sixth story. Once when I was like eight years old I lived in a trailer park with mostly normal but occasionally sketchy folks around. I was really bored at home and asked my parents if I could walk up the street to my friend's house, not very far maybe just out of sight of my parents' trailer. It was like the middle of the day and we knew a lot of people on our street so my parents said yes. So here I am an eight-year-old little girl walking to my friend's house. Just as I got out of sight I saw an adult man walking towards me straight ahead. I immediately have my alerts on cuz I was alone of course and had never seen this dude before. I keep hoping he veers off on another course away from me but he keeps coming towards me and I notice his eyes are locked on me and he's smiling. I got the creeps but I was pretty close to my friend's house now. I looked around and realized there wasn't anyone else outside to witness anything. He finally gets close enough to say something to me and this is what made me run, he said, hey do you think you could take your shoes off? Please, I want to see your feet. And I said, huh? What? And he asked me again to see my feet. Y'all I turned around and sprinted so fast back to my house. I was terrified. Seventh story. I was walking from a local shopping mall to the train station so I could go home. The shortcut went through a huge long tunnel and was out of sight from the road, and wasn't used unless you knew the area. When I got to the tunnel I looked up and saw one guy standing right at the other end of the tunnel, in the middle, just looking in my direct direction. Like he was waiting. Every hair on my body stood on end. I felt like I needed to vomit and before I knew what I was doing my feet turned me around and started walking fast away. He started walking after me and said, don't worry, it's not like I'm going to rape you. I ran and walked right on the edge of a highway in plain view of cars in case he ran after me. I couldn't stop shaking for an hour. Eighth reply. One time I was out in Colorado with some buddies hiking near the top of a mountain. Some bad weather started to roll in but the top was only 15 minutes away so I went ahead while they went back down. As I was getting to the top I felt static in the air and the hair in my head started to stand up. I immediately started to panic cause I thought I was about to get struck by lightning so naturally I ran down without ever getting to the top. I'm not sure if I was gonna get struck but I sure as hell wasn't sticking around to find out. Ninth reply. When I was 27 my girlfriend lived in a crappy part of Hollywood, Florida near US 1. She had a kid pretty young but the dad ended up going to jail for assault. The place she could afford was run down AF, with all sorts of addicts and genuine lowlifes living in the units around her. She hated the place. She couldn't move in with me Beckow say I was just renting a room where I lived. 
It was better than living at her parents though, drunk abusive dad, addict mom. I went to visit her after my shift ended at 9 p.m. Picked up some food and planned to cook for her. We were there for about an hour just sitting on the couch watching her kid play with a box. Then the banging started on the door. She looks terrified thinking it's her ex. I'm kind of freaked out also because I heard all these stories about him. Some guy is cursing, hitting something against the door hard. We don't even want to peek through the window or peephole thinking he's got a gun. We call the police but the operator is having a tough time hearing. Then we hear some other woman screaming and cursing. He had the wrong door. We hear them start fighting. Smashing. More screaming. Sounds like she's spitting and we hear punches. We're not sure if it's her or him but it's loud. 911 operator says police are on their way. The kid starts screaming because he's scared. The man outside starts banging on the door again. He thinks his kid is with us and shouts he's going to kill us for taking his kid. My girlfriend just breaks down at this point and starts crying. Maybe 10 minutes later the police arrive. The arrest both of them then took our statements. She moved out a couple days later and we ended up renting another crappy apartment but in a much better area. 10th story. Back when my son was only about a year old my husband worked second shift so I was alone every evening. We lived in townhouses at the time and had a neighbor who was a war vet, my husband was friendly with. He was a little off in the sense there was very obvious PTSD and other traumas but all around a nice dude. 11th reply. I don't tell this story often but this seems like a good place. Back in college I used to drive up the Oregon coast on weekends, then just crash in my car when I got tired. I woke from a nap in the driver's seat and something just didn't feel quite right. It was just dusk and the light was fading pretty fast. I yawned and stretched and as I did so I turned my head to the side and just caught a face ducking down below my rear passenger window. I went to hit the lock button just to make sure and in my panic I accidentally unlocked the doors briefly and then locked them again. I stared at the window for a few minutes, knowing that someone was crouching just out of sight. Even 6U ally, I started the car and thought I heard a scuffing sound. Whoever it was didn't reappear, but that was enough for me. As I noped out of there and pulled out back onto Highway 101, I glanced back and a bald figure in a red t-shirt with something wrapped around his face booked it into the woods on the side of the road. That was the end of that weekend trip. I drove the two hours back to my dorm room, white knuckled hands locked on the steering wheel. I had to pull over a few miles down the road though to deal with the adrenaline shakes. The twelfth reply. 2019 summer, I was house sitting for my dad while he was away for work. The house is in the middle of nowhere and barely even on Google Maps, usually when friends would come over I would have to drive to the top of the nearest paved road and led them down a few more I paved streets to my dad's place. I had had a few drinks with friends and been dropped off my friend that lived close by, he dropped me at the side of the house because it was easier for him to turn around there. So I walked up the stairs and entered with my key through the side door that led to the kitchen. The kitchen overlooked the front garden but the front door was nestled into a small porch and wasn't visible to me. I saw a movement in the front garden while I was making tea in the kitchen and immediately turned off the lights. There was a man trying to look into the kitchen windows from the garden, he ended up walking around to the wall to ceiling glass doors around the back of the house, cupping his hands to the glass and trying to look in. I wasn't completely sober that night so I remember just thinking the situation didn't seem real. He couldn't see me in the dark but I was hiding behind the wall that separated the kitchen from the dining slash lounge area, open floor plan. I had stupidly not locked one of the glass doors closer to the front door and he started entering the house, in the pitch black, not realizing I was maybe 10 feet away from him. I had already called the friend who had dropped me off as I knew he was still nearby. Cops would have taken at least 30 minutes to get to me. Knowing his parents, ex-military, kept a gun in a safe in the truck. I remember just wanting to run, get out of the house ASAP. The situation didn't feel real at all, like something from a movie. I was acting on adrenaline. But if I ran, I'd be alone in the middle of nowhere with a deranged man chasing after me.
As the guy walked further into the house, I stepped out and pulled a knife on him, again, I was not sober. It was a very stupid thing to do. He tried to incoherently make conversation but I got him out of the door just as my friend pulled up with his gun. The dude bolted to his car that was parked in an area concealed by trees on the property. Turns out he was the gardener. He had been keeping tabs on me, knew I was house sitting alone for my dad while he was out of town, was very high on meth, he admitted to me while I had the knife out, and had been waiting on the front porch for me to come home. Except I had used the side door that night, something I never usually did. If I hadn't have used the side door that night, I have no idea what would have happened. I also have no idea what would have happened if my friend hadn't come back when I called him, because the guy was starting to get aggressive and trying to come towards me right when my friend got there with his gun out. We like to joke about it now, but it was the worst scenario I have ever experienced where I wanted to just run and get the heck away.